Before we get started on the review, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's reached out to me in reference to the last video I posted about me, you know, leaving my job and me focusing on doing this is. Uh, people who I've not spoken to in many years have reached out to me and it's, it's just been really, really nice. So thank you very much. Uh, now that's all out of the way, let's uh, review this terrible film. <laughs> Space Jam A New Legacy is the sequel to 1996's Space Jam. It stars Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. And this time around, we follow the basketball legend as his son is kidnapped by an AI, played by Don Cheadle. Yes, you heard that correctly. I think for a lot of people my age, from my generation, uh, a lot of people have very fond memories of the original Space Jam, but actually having re-watched that film a couple of years ago, it, I, it's not aged well. It's, I don't think it's a great film whatsoever. The only positive thing I could say about it is it's absolutely astonishing soundtrack. And a fun fact is that the original Space Jam soundtrack is one of the best-selling movie soundtracks of all time. That thing went six times platinum. Six times platinum. Space Jam. But I think those of you who have a nostalgic connection to the original, maybe rewatch it because you might be think you might be looking through a pair of rose tinted glasses when you think of the original Space Jam. Because in reality, it's not that good of a film. Now, this is a film that's been around two decades in the making. There's been rumours of a Space Jam sequel for many, many years. In fact, there was even a point in time where there was going to be a skating themed film, which was going to star Tony Hawk alongside the Warner Brothers Looney Tunes called Skate Jam. However, that never that came and went, and we never saw it. And now, finally, 25 years later, we have Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. So what did I enjoy? I could say LeBron James's performance. I mean, for a man who isn't an upfront actor, you know, this is a relatively okay performance. He's certainly a lot better than those real-life NBA players' uh, voice performances in the NBA 2K games. Who had thought about what? That a young buck like you could actually do the right thing and avoid getting his sorry butt kicked out the game. Me back. He told me to chill. Sounds like a wise fella to win in this league. But other than that, this is a... It's a weird film. It really is a weird film. Uh, the animation, I'm not a fan of, especially the, the 3D animation. It just doesn't look right when interspliced with the live action stuff. Uh, things like that really irk me. I don't know why. It's just something I, I can't buy. But the film acts as this really, it acts as like a sort of advertisement for Warner Brothers. The world in which our characters find themselves in is this sort of AI-run Warner Brothers universe and our characters go to different franchises uh, owned by Warner Brothers, such as The Matrix, Mad Max, Justice League, uh, amongst other, Game of Thrones being another one. It's, it's very unusual because, uh, <laughs> you know, you've got to take your kids... To this film are they going to understand matrix references are they going to understand mad max references uh, no the way lebron is is um portrayed in this film is it's sort of like an abusive dad i mean not to the extent of where he beats his son or anything horrible like that but he is he wants his son to be the next big basketball star he but his son is more interested on creating his own video game and LeBron's, the, the kid's 12 years old, he's created his own video game, and LeBron's like, no, fuck, fuck your game, play basketball, you prick. And it's just like, whoa. And, and then I guess that's the lesson to be learned, you know, once his son goes missing and he, he learns to, I guess, love his son, which if you're his dad, you should do that anyway. What the fuck? But something else is the, the film's absurd runtime. This film clocks in at two hours, which compared to the original Space Jam, which is just under 90 minutes, and you, I wish you could see my face when, when the actual basketball game starts in this film. There's still an hour remaining. And I remember checking the runtime thinking, we've only just got to the game and there's still a whole hour left. That's crazy. And if I'm honest, it's boring. And if I'm being 100% honest, I think young children will find this boring in all honesty. Shy, I'm going to give Space Jam a new legacy one star. It's, it's one of the worst films this year. It really is. I mean, once again, I, my expectations were low, but with my expectations being so low, I expected that to sort of heighten my enjoyment of the film, thinking it wouldn't be as bad as I expected it to be, but it was probably even worse. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that cringy shit I don't like saying, and I'll see you on the next episode of James Eddie Reviews.